Hi, I'm MGR Invests, and today we'll be analysing Novo Nordisk. This is a pharmaceutical company which specialises in the field of diabetes, obesity, and rare blood and hormonal diseases. Novo Nordisk produce 50% of the world's insulin supply, have over 36 million people using their diabetes products, operate in over 50 countries, and have produced over 600 million insulin pens. They have had a phenomenal year with a return of 80%, but with a P ratio of 42, Novo Nordisk could be seen as overpriced. Is this true, or are people anticipating huge growth in the stock price? Today, we will analyse Novo Nordisk, discussing their growth areas and business fundamentals before deciding whether it is a good investment or not. Novo Nordisk were founded in 1923 and are a Danish company. Their purpose is to drive change to defeat serious chronic diseases built upon their expertise in diabetes. Novo employ more than 59,000 people in 80 offices around the world and market their products in over 170 countries. They have 10 research and development centres across China, Denmark, India, the UK and the US and 16 production sites across Algeria, Brazil, China, Denmark, France, Japan, Russia and the USA. Obesity and diabetes represent two huge growth areas where Novo specialises. Obesity is now recognised as one of the most important public health problems facing the world today. Global obesity prevalence has risen by about 2% per decade. Currently, around 13% of the world's adult population are obese, and 39% of adults are overweight. In children, the prevalence of overweight and obesity increased from 4.2% in 1990 to 6.7% in 2010 and to 7% in 2015. As populations increase, these relatively small increases in percentage points equal millions of people. By 2025, 167 million more people will become less healthy because they are overweight or obese. This translates into diabetes. Today, one in every 11 people in the world has diabetes, and this is projected to hit one in nine by 2045. That is a rise from 729 million people to 891 million people, based on global statistics of populations. If this increase in the number of people with diabetes was represented by a country, then it would be the eighth most populous country in the world. Currently, 10% of the entire NHS budget is spent on diabetes alone, and research by the York Health Economic Consortium suggests this could rise to 17% in the next 25 years, a rise of 9 billion, so it is a major problem. Fortunately for Novo Nordisk, they are set to capitalise on this through their medications. One drug we're going to talk about is semaglutide, also called Wagovi. After a series of clinical trials, this drug was issued by the European Union in 2022. It is used in those with obesity or those who are overweight but have weight-related health problems such as high blood pressure or diabetes. Studies have shown that the drug is effective at reducing body weight by 5%, but even up to 15% after 68 weeks. 84% of people lost at least 5% of their total body weight. However, it has also been shown to lower the incidence of death from cardiovascular causes, heart attacks and stroke by 20%. But this is just one drug, and Novo Nordisk produce a host of drugs benefiting people with diabetes and obesity. Given the trends discussed, this represents a huge growth area for Novo Nordisk, given the known benefits of their drugs. And they are not stopping here. Their pipeline is full of trials across four phases, investigating obesity, NASH, which is a fatty liver disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes and cardiovascular diseases, in addition to others. Novo Nordisk are also investing heavily, announcing a £5 billion investment in expanding manufacturing facilities. So let's look at their financials to see if they're a good buy right now. Before we get into it, feel free to hit the subscribe button below. I am a new channel trying to build a reputation on trustworthy content into stocks. The subscribers really help in getting my content out there. Novo Nordisk currently trade at a P ratio of 42, which is lower than the average of competitors such as Eli Lilly, which currently trade at a P ratio of 106. However, European pharmaceuticals currently trade at an average P ratio of 22.2, which suggests that Novo Nordisk may be slightly overpriced. It cannot be considered a high dividend payer, as the yield sits around 1%. However, the amount per share has been increasing as the stock price rises. Novo Nordisk has fantastic margins, Profit margins sit at 35.11% and this year's operating margin was 45.82% and net income has risen 35% in the trailing 12 months. Net income has steadily been increasing and Novo Nordisk holds more cash than all of their debt combined. Although short-term assets do not cover the short-term liabilities, 
Novo Nordisk are in a very healthy position, with long-term assets covering long-term liabilities, with a current ratio of 1.53. This is reflected in the free cash flow, which has been steadily increasing over the past few years. Overall, I think this stock may be overpriced based on current performance, but strongly feel that the future growth makes this stock a must-buy. I am happy to consistently buy into Novo Nordisk per month, and will be allocating around 5% of my monthly deposits to Novo Nordisk, as I am looking to hold them for the next 20 to 30 years. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you have any stocks that you'd like me to research, then please also comment these, and I'll make sure that I look into them.